a bookseller I know, Roxanne Cody, uh, in Connecticut, uh, RJ Julia is the name of her store, uh, compared the unnamed to the work of Samuel Beckett, and that was before I realized that Beckett had written a novel called The Unnameable. And it was also before I saw that you had listed that book, among the others in the trilogy, as one of your favorites, mm -hmm. uh, an influence of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, I wondered how much, if at all, it influenced this book. I have not read it. Um, well, you know, Beckett is tough because, I, I mean, if I, it, it, when I think about Beckett, I think about him kind of closing the literary ellipse. That's what, I think it starts with uh, Don Quixote. It starts with Cervantes, and it's spra the sprawling ever recursive, ever digressive novel that goes on and on and is self-referential and is, uh, spans a lot of different times. I mean, it's very comedic, but it's also very touching and all this. And we do this big loop and we end with Beckett, who throws out everything and essentially uh, doesn't provide you with any of those narrative fun and games that Cervantes does. I mean, they're fun and games in, in Beckett, but it's it's the inversion of all of them that, that Cervantes. So you've got, to me, I just feel like, you know, when you hit Beckett, there's no place to go. And it's an enormous gauntlet thrown down to any writer that's writing today to say, where do you go after Beckett? Um, everybody else is sort of playing within the ellipse created between Cervantes and Beckett. That's how I'm thinking of it anyway. There was part of me that wanted to say, well, what if Beckett were writing as an American writer in 2005 or 10 or whatever and was a realist? Now, I mean, I think the obvious answer to that is Beckett would say he was a realist, and I, I tend to think that that's true. But with the nitty-gritty, with the medical detail and all the stuff that he obviously was uh, far more, far above, you know, I mean, his approach to um, writing was so sophisticated that it's impossible to think of anybody really touching his coattails. But I thought, um, why not try to be as ambitious as possible and write a book about a character that's like uh, the creature in The Unnameable, or Malloy, or uh, even Malone, um, who has to suffer the indignities of sickness and death, um, and do it in a, in a almost naturalistic way. The problem with that is that you know Beckett uh, under undercuts a lot of the grimness with his wonderful sense of humor. Um, there's not a lot of that in the unnamed. <laughs>